welcome to Thinking Green. I'm Rana. Sorry, one of our monitors is not working, so I never know what's on the screen. But welcome to Thinking Green. Um, I'm Rana, and uh, tonight, quite literally, I guess, we'll be doing some trash talking. Yes. I've got Brian Dowdy here with me, and he's the chair of New London's uh, relatively new Solid Waste Task Force. And so we will be talking about uh, what the group has been doing for the past year, what we're looking forward to, and a lot about the nuts and bolts of what's changing in the trash world. So thanks for coming on, Brian. Thank you, Rana. I guess just really briefly, maybe you can talk about how this uh, group originated in New London. Sure. So um, the group came about, um, it was formed by, by town council, uh, and it came from opposition from the community uh, to pay as you throw or a community coming together asking for a pause in pay as you throw to study recycling or, or trash a little more. So council put the committee together. It's uh, made up of eight members and um, we are tasked with three goals, which is to increase recycling, reduce solid waste and garner community support. And that's why I'm here to talk to the community and give more information. About all three of the above. Right. <laughs> and so we, we formed uh, over the summer and we started meeting uh, in September. Oh, wow. So it is really rather recent. It's very recent. So we actually had our sixth meeting last night. Um, initially, we were tasked to meet once a month. Um, I thought it would be better if we did it twice a month so we can get in a little more uh, information. Uh, so we're, I think we're on information overload now, um, and we'll be starting meeting again uh, in January. It seems as though looking, you know, at the agendas, I haven't haven't been going to the meetings, but they're really um, content rich. It's like you are in your own education phase. We are definitely in our <laughs> own education phase. So, the way each meeting has, has kind of worked is uh, we bring in an expert in a certain aspect of garbage or recycling. Um, so our first meeting, we had Julie Camerata, who was a committee member at, at the time, and she's in the recycling industry, and she talked about the ever-changing landscape of recycling and tipping fees and the wonderful challenges we face uh, <laughs> and unpredictable ones moving forward. Um, our second meeting, we had David Aldridge from Scura, uh, and he talked about a lot of the same things, and um, they're, they're an authority that represents 12 towns uh, around New London, and they do a fantastic job of keeping our tipping fee lower than most other places um, around. Uh, the third meeting we had uh, Brian Sear, uh, who's Public Works Director, and Paul Gills, uh, who is our risk manager. And the, essentially they talked about what happens day to day and uh, the inherent risks of um, solid waste pickup. Uh, and then we had another meeting. Uh, we brought in three of our solid waste workers, uh, the hand, feet on the ground and, and all that, <laughs> hands, feet, whatever. Uh, and they talked about the challenges in New London, which um, are many, um, from just picking up the garbage to transferring it to Preston, where we burn and, and transfer our garbage into energy, uh, or they also plow. So that, that's a challenge as well. And then our next meeting, we talked about um, some options in New London for uh, privatization. And the meeting we had uh, last night was with CJ May, who is a former um, recycling director at Yale. He did that for about 20 years. And then he went to Waterbury in 2015. and was able to start a program last November, and they have tripled their recycling rate in about a year, which is wow. tremendous. <laughs> that is tremendous. Even though uh, you talked a little bit about the economic side, even though recycling is not the economic boon it was <laughs> three, one, two, three, four, five years ago. Sure. I would actually say recycling is not the economic boon it was when pay as you throw was first presented to, to the city of New London. So if you go back to the first presentation of pay as you throw to New London, I think it was in January, um, we were getting a rebate on our recycling of $5. So for every ton that we produced and we brought to Willimantic, which is where our recycling goes, we would get $5 back. And we're most likely, because of a changing landscape, going to be paying for our recycling. I don't know that rate. I'm hoping we'll know it soon. Um, I just hope it's low. <laughs> but yeah. we'll most likely be paying versus getting a rebate moving forward. And it's not just a New London issue. It's um, a Connecticut issue. It's a Massachusetts. It's United States. It's 
It's worldwide. kind of global. It's definitely I, we're global. reading that China is not taking our recyclables. And sure. So China, uh, it, what really happened is in December of last year, um, China said we are no longer taking your recyclables unless they're 99.7% clean. So if you have, which is hard. <laughs> I'm thinking about the education level just to get everything clean. Right. And, and so China was nice and they rolled it back to 99.5% clean, which doesn't help much. So if you have a ton or a, or a brick of two tons of recycling, if there's a plastic bag or several plastic bags or a garden hose or other items that should not be in recycling, it makes that um, brick dirty and China won't take it from us anymore. So essentially we would ship recycling over to China and they'd say no and then we'd ship it back which with this show Thinking Green is not exactly good for the environment with all the fuel over and back. Um, so our job is we have to get our better recycling and cleaner recycling so that we can hopefully keep the rates low. But the, the market essentially collapsed and that's where we are today. So we really can't make money anymore on recycling, but hopefully we can save on the very high tipping fees we'll be seeing for trash. Yeah, I don't know if we can get money back on recycling. There are, you know, it's a commodity, so certain items in recycling are more valuable than others. But like the stock market, if you watch that, it's up 500 one day and down 500. Mm. It, it, it's the same kind of thing. I, if I were a betting person, I wouldn't bet on recycling going either way. <laughs> So uh, before the show, you had mentioned that, you know, the three uh, phases, I guess, of, of this work is getting people to think about recycling sure. more. And I'm thinking that's mostly where you are now, getting people's behavior to change sure. and actually accomplish it, and then working out all the details. Yeah, so it's not really an official line that the committee has taken. It's more of a line I, I take where one goal is getting people thinking about recycling. Uh, two is getting people doing recycling, and then three is refining. So if we can get people at least questioning what they should and should not be recycling, th that's a start. Uh, and then we get people recycling, and then the third step is re really to refine it. So if you order a pizza and you have your pizza box and you think, okay, do I recycle this or do I not recycle this? There's an app from Scura which you can download, and you just type in pizza box and it'll tell you what to do. So you recycle it. Great. But... Now, if the box is really greasy, can you still recycle it? See, and that's where I'm going. <laughs> so we got you thinking about it, and then we got you recycling the pizza box, but now we're going to refine your recycling. And if there's grease on the bottom, take the greasy part and throw it away. Or if the entire bottom's greasy, just rip off the top and put that in your recycling. So there's a lot of different ways we can refine recycling. It just it will take time. It would be nice if we could flick a switch, but I haven't found the switch. Now, since you started talking about... Um, Food waste. Yes. Uh, we do have some slides about it, but food waste makes up quite a bit of our solid waste sure. stream right now. So uh, the average number is probably about 30% across the board in, in the United States, maybe worldwide, is food waste or food sc scraps. Uh, some of it is somewhat unavoidable. I mean, if, if you have a cantaloupe, you're probably not going to eat the outside of a cantaloupe. Right. So you can see in the picture there. Um, this is a barrel from one of the schools in New London, and we have a program where um, Sicarelli Pig Farm in Waterford comes and they picks up, pick up our barrels. So they, when they're three quarters full, they pick up the barrel, they bring it back to their farm, and they... Oh, yeah, and we have a picture of, well, it's the more. barrels. <laughs> so the, or some of the barrels. This, is, uh, uh, um, this one's actually from Conn College, oh. and um, they have a refrigerator so that the food waste... Um, or food scraps can last a little longer. For our schools in New London, they pick up twice a week, and I believe at Conn College, because they have a bigger facility, it's, it's just once a week. So they come and they pick up the barrels, and they're about 300 pounds each. Uh, and what happens is they actually charge New London uh, for each barrel, which sounds kind of silly, but it's the way it works. And so we pay $58 a ton to get rid of our solid waste. When they come and pick up our barrels, we pay them $5 per barrel, and every seven barrels equals one ton. So seven times five is 35, and we're actually saving New London $23 uh, dollars per ton um, oh, with yeah. food waste. So it and might I be know you have a chart. We can't really see the numbers too well um, on the screen. <laughs> I don't have it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you can see, uh, I don't know, the sixth column. Um, in, in about a year, or the first year of existence of this program, um, the schools were able to divert 86 point, 86, yeah, 86 point seven tons of food scraps from solid waste to the to the pig farmer. Um, and actually, was spearheaded by uh, John Sadie and his, the school building and maintenance committee signed this contract. So it's it's been successful, and we're hoping if we can maybe get some restaurants or other individuals possibly on board to expand it a little further to get that 30% of food waste or food scraps out of the solid waste. Uh, really, if you take food, it's made up of a lot of water. So a typical number is 30% of our solid waste are food items and 80% of that is water. And I think we would all prefer not to move water around. Right. <laughs> And the other piece of it, I think, is when we look at our trash bags, I know one of the objections or concerns with pay as you throw is, oh, you have trash in bags and we have skunks and raccoons sure. and all kinds of other wildlife in our neighborhood. Coyotes, Coyotes <laughs> yes. Uh, that um, having food waste in your trash bags is an attractant, uh, you know, whereas if we can remove that from our sure. trash bags, um, not only are we not you know, moving water around, but we don't have that problem with maybe finding everything strewn over, over the sure. yard. So one thing with the, the, uh, our, our pig farmer that they do do is uh, there's a, a cap, a lid, so we don't have to deal with that. Uh, but it is a problem with, with bags and even with garbage cans. Uh, some of our animals are probably cleverer than you and I. Yes. <laughs> and they can knock over a garbage can and then get into whatever they need to do. But if we can get it out somehow, uh, that would be ideal, either composting or get it to a pig farm or um, there's lots of different ways to do it. It's just a matter of getting it out. That's, that's the big goal, reduce the solid waste. Now, how is it working in, in, in the New London schools? I, mean, I, I love having, well, I like having people you know, starting to think about doing it in sure. their own backyards, uh, composting, or starting to think about curbside pickup, but systemically having it throughout the school system seems like potentially more bang for the buck. It, it, it is. Uh, so right now the way it works is uh, f there are seven schools in New London, and five of them um, do this, this program because the other two don't actually produce food, so they wouldn't do it. Uh, it works just from the kitchen. So it's a little controlled so our chefs through the brigade program take all the food scraps and they put it in the barrels it, it hasn't extended out to the students so they mm -hmm. don't take a plate and scrape off their food yeah. the main reason is uh and i have three kids it's hard to trust kids to do the right thing right. and so you want just the food scraps we don't want commingling or uh forks right. or plates or napkins inside the barrels so if they're if our pig farmer does find um forks or uh, other oddball items that the pigs right. shouldn't be eating, um, our price per barrel actually goes up for that barrel. Uh, fortunately, we've been quite lucky or we're quite good at it and we've had zero contamination in the first year. If we roll that out to students, let's hope for zero. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we also well hope that you know Brigade is providing really high quality sure. food to our students. Hopefully, there, we're not seeing the level of waste that we might if the food were not good. Yeah, and, and actually, when I went with the pig farmer, I, I was surprised um, because it's just coming from the kitchen. There, there was waste, but it's not waste that you can use. I, I don't know anybody who eats the outside of a cantaloupe. Right. I don't know anybody who eats the outside of a banana. I mean, maybe there are people, but it's not waste in the term of just... We're not wasting the food. Right, We're it using it for a different, a different use. Yes. Yeah, so, um, um, thinking about food waste, we think about yard waste too. Sure. New, New London recently had two, you know, yard waste pickup days. Uh, I know I spoke to someone last week who asked when the next one is, and I said, "Well, next year." Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so is there a way that we can? do our leaf and yard waste pick up better? Um, I, I think the best answer that <laughs> to that is we can do it more. Uh, and I don't have the best way to do that now. Um, our public's work department has been trimmed and trimmed and, and trimmed yeah. o o over the years. And it's not to 
place blame. That's just the reality. We don't mm -hmm. have as many people. So w we should be able to pick up those items more often uh, or set aside a week or two. Um, leaves are always a problem. They come back every year. We haven't found a solution to that. Right. <laughs> um, and, and also brush is, is, is a difficult item to deal with. Uh, it's not like we can pick it up easily. It, they're no, it's very sizes. bulky. Yeah, it's, so um, what actually happens is our brush or larger items go to our transfer station and Scura comes and they grind it all up and make it into mulch and they take it away for us. So it, it, it's, there's no perfect solution yeah. there. But I think we can and we have to do it more. The one thing I would definitely say is if you are going to bag your leaves, do not put them in plastic bags. Right. Just get the, um, the paper bags from Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever, wherever your favorite place is, right. and get them in there or get them on a tarp and maybe find a, a, a crew that does yard work and, and they can take them away for you. And don't put them in your garbage either. No. no. Once again, <laughs> as, well, leaves are a little bit dry when they fall from the, the tree, but I imagine like food waste, yard waste has a lot of water in it. It does. Actually, I'll give you an example. It's not yard waste, but I did a, a little experiment. Um, I took our local newspaper of the day and I weighed out a week and then I took my hose and I wet the paper and it became 80% heavier. So mm -hmm. we can bring dry paper to our recycling place in Willimantic or we can bring wet paper and pay oh. more. I would, I would prefer dry. <laughs> and yet the bins we currently have that were city issued are not covered. So people might put dry paper in them and if sure. it's raining like the night before trash day or the morning of trash day, they could be wet by the time they get to the transfer yeah. station. And I think there's a couple uh, aspects of that. You're absolutely correct. And the other aspect is if it is dry and it's kind of a windy day, and I think every time I put out my recycling it's windy, the, the garbage goes, or the, the recycling goes all over the place. But it, the, the weight is an issue, and if we had lids or bigger containers with lids, would that make a difference? I, I would rather not I transfer would, water. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope so. I mean, we did, you know, personally uh, purchase a, a roll-away container sure. for recyclables, uh, not as big as the green ones for the trash. And the ones for the trash we put out, maybe once every three weeks. And sure. the recyclable one is actually, we put it out every week. Yeah, I, I think um, what I have found is, if you go back four or five months ago, um, I didn't notice as much with our trash and recycling. I didn't observe it. It wasn't on my radar. And now I go around and I see people trying to recycle. So you'll see a, a 96 gallon a green container, a garbage container, and next to it there'll be a nicely laid out pile of cardboard. And they're trying to recycle, but we don't have the receptacles in New London. So uh, uh, some people have the bins that were provided okay. by the city. Uh, the, some people have the larger blue containers. Some p people have whatever they want to use and they put <laughs> recycling in, <laughs> in paint or however they want to do it. And some people don't have anything at all. So it's, it's kind of a mix and match. And so if you go back to our, um, our solid waste crews, it presents a challenge where you're, you get off the truck to empty and you, you're not sure what you're going to get. And if it was uniform, then they would at least know. Now, most of the time, you can tell if it's garbage sure. or recycling. But if it was all uniform, it would it, be better, I think. Yeah, it isn't as though they have time to really, like, consult over what's No, no. They, 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 they have to cover a whole lot of houses they do. In, yeah. in a very short time. So I, I believe the number is that it's about 10,500 stops. And so you're not going to go through. I mean, if you see something obvious, so styrofoam should not go into your recycling. Most of the time, they pull it out and they'll throw it in your garbage. That's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, but other times you don't see things or it's hidden underneath or it, it's just a very big challenge. To now, you gave me a slide here about sure. the New London Transfer Station. Um, you know, some, re some, some recycling uh, things that we can do curbside and things we can just bring to the transfer sure. station. So um, that's always a question, I think, that people have, like, what's in, what's out? What do I do with this stuff if I'm not going to put it all in my huge green sure. bin? Sure. So w what I found after we started this process talking to people is um, we just don't know. 
we, we don't know what to put in recycling. We don't know what goes to the transfer station. Um, a lot of people don't know we have a transfer station. Uh, so on, on this flyer, on the upper right, you'll see the transfer station address uh, and you'll see the, the phone number. And then below are the hours. Uh, and then on the left side, there's a little recycling logo, which is particular to New London. It's, <laughs> it's got the, it's yeah. got a whale tail. <laughs> uh, and then uh, underneath that are curbside recycling. Um, getting all the entities to agree on what should be recycled is a, is a little bit difficult. So I met with Willy Waste, which takes our recycling, and then Scura, which negotiates our contracts and also does um, our, our solid waste. They, they really help out New London. And <clears throat> this is the list that they had come up with. So I'm trying to stay consistent with what other entities are doing. And then on the right-hand side is a list of items you can bring to the transfer station at no cost. Of course, the challenge is we have to bring them there. And getting people to do that is a, a challenge. But you, if you start at the top, so we have batteries. And that can be anything from um, a battery for uh, an ear hearing aid up to a car battery and anything in between. Um, I have three kids. We have remote controls. We have Wii controls. I mean, we go through a lot of batteries. And batteries are heavy, so don't put them in your garbage. You can bring them to the transfer station. I, I suggest you just get a shoebox and you kind of put them in there and then once in a while. <laughs> just bring a box of batteries. Bring a box. And if you have a smoke detector, which I hope we all do, um, you're supposed to change those when the clocks change. Well, there's a battery. Don't throw it in your garbage. I, I believe California is the only state that outlaws batteries in the garbage. You're not allowed to do that at all. But we can dispose of them for free. And everything we divert out of our solid waste will save you and I. I pennies and the nickels and then dimes and, and, and on a, Yeah, on a municipal level that those pennies and nickels and dimes really do add up. They do up. add up. And, and, you know, in addition, it's good for the environment to get batteries out and paint and cans as long as it has the label, um, antifreeze, clothes, um, you bring there and they'll, they'll take them for you, or textiles. Electronics, um, they'll take a computer, uh, speakers, TV, VCR, DVR, a lot of things they'll take. So don't put them in your garbage. Otherwise, we pay for them. But if you bring them there, they'll take them, and there's a company that comes in and takes them away. Um, fluorescent light bulbs, mattresses and box springs uh, is another one. Um, oil, motor, and cooking. And then the paper bottles and cans are essentially what we do curbside, but they'll also take them at the, the transfer station. And, and then last but not least are the scrap metal. And then if you go to the bottom left, I'll probably talk about it 10,000 times. <laughs> And you'll probably hear about it on every news article or video that you see. Um, in the recycling, do not put any plastic bags. Now, there, I know ShopRite in New London mm -hmm. is a place where people can bring plastic bags. Right. Are there any other spots to bring plastic bags? So in New London, ShopRite is the only place. So when you go into ShopRite on the left-hand side, it looks like a garbage can, but I think it says film or plastic recycling there. Um, the interesting thing about plastic bags is they call it film and you can recycle film of various kinds. So if you buy a case of water and it's encased in plastic wrap, that plastic wrap is recyclable but not in your blue recycling cart or bin. It can go to ShopRite and be put in, in their containers. Uh, and then the bottles, we drink the water, return those for five cents and then if there's cardboard underneath that can be recycled. So a case of water essentially has no waste, as long as we right. dispose of it properly. And um, drink the water. And drink the water, yes. <laughs> uh, another example I use, um, if you eat cereal, um, if you eat the cereal, that's good. Uh, the bag inside, if it's a plastic bag, can go to ShopRite, and then the cardboard can be recycled in your um, cart or bin. And back to your question, though, do we have other places to do that? We don't New London. It's hmm. just ShopRite currently. Um, in There are Lowe's and Home Depot and Target. Uh, have these and there's other places I, I think if you type film yeah. and recycling on uh, so there are a few places within a few miles yeah. that we can get to yeah I think there's about 12 or 13 within a 20 mile radius that are listed on um, one of the Connecticut websites Th there may be more they don't advertise actually the the shop right one unfortunately is not listed but you and I know it's there <laughs> yeah I think that's the one that most new Londoners know about mm -hmm. but um, just because it's been there as long as the, the store's been there but it is confusing because um, sometimes when you buy clothing that's mm -hmm. in a plastic bag, 
the plastic bag has a big recycle symbol on it with like a number five or a number it, two or yeah, you I, think. Yeah. So what's the problem with plastic bags and film? Sure, so I'm gonna take a little bit <laughs> sure. of a segue and then come back. But so the, 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 it's a little bit of a misnomer to say it is recyclable <laughs> because uh, if you take your toilet, there's a lot of things that are flushable as well, but you shouldn't flush them. <laughs> so diaper wipes, like that type of thing, should right. not go in there. And it's, this, it's, it's going to be the same concept I'm getting to. So um, plastic bags are recyclable. So when you bring them to ShopRite, they will take away that garbage can eventually. And most likely, whatever's in there, they'll melt down to make um, the plastic decking. I'm not sure what it's called. but uh, Oh, yeah, uh, like the Trex brand yeah, or that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, but if you put them in your recycling container, what happens is they'll go to the MRF, which is the recycling plant. and as products get sorted, um, the bags get stuck in the machines. So the best example I can give is if you have anybody in your house with a long hair and you happen to vacuum your floor, the hair gets stuck inside the bottom. You have a long hair cat that's sort of like Perfect. that. <laughs> so eventually the, uh, the vacuum cleaner, the, the little part that spins, gets clogged up and then you have to cut out all of the hair. It's the same concept at the recycling uh, plants. So the bags get stuck on there and then they clog up the machines and people say two to three times a day they have to send they shut down the whole plant and they send people in there to cut out all the plastic bags which is a pain so really the, the recycling plants have an incredibly difficult time dealing with plastic bags just like our vacuums have a difficult time dealing with cat hair <laughs> yes you know it's a general thing as you're talking i'm thinking you mentioned co commingling at the start that we shouldn't you know commingle but it seems like the whole recycling process is kind of like undoing the commingling, separating sure. things into various components to be utilizable for other purposes. Yeah, we, we do, in New London, we do single stream. And, and most um, towns or municipalities or whatever, they, they do single stream, which basically means you have one container and all of your recycling goes in it, no plastic bags. Uh, but everything else goes in there, including glass and plastic, uh, paper, or whatever else you can you can put in the container and then it goes to the, the plant and it gets sorted out uh, ideally we might be nice if each had 20 separate recycling containers in our house but it, it, that's not gonna happen uh, no we might go up to instead of two three or four sure and I think most of us remembered at a time where our glass and maybe um, metal went into a different container and our paper and our plastic went a separate one we just seem to have gotten away with that away from that and you could argue it was a mistake I don't know I guess we are where we are right now and we've got to move from yeah it's it, whatever our current situation is but I also think with technology our the places where they sort have gotten really good at sorting things so then they, they may have to backtrack as well it, it, it's a t double edged sword yeah <laughs> So uh, for curbside recycling, since you mentioned it, this, this is a summary of what we can put in our bins. Sure. Yeah, just, but. It might be a little small, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, th this doesn't look so bad. It isn't like the, yeah. <laughs> the graph with the numbers. So yes, yeah, so, but, but with cereal and different kinds of boxes, we have to take the liners yep. out. Uh, you know, plastic bottles, wax containers, paper, foil. Now, I think no lids or straws. I, that includes like the, um, the foil pull tabs on yogurt, doesn't it? Right, so with lids and straws and smaller items, um, what happens is it will go to a, a recycling plant and it goes on a conveyor belt and it's kind of got holes underneath the conveyor belt and those items fall through and they become garbage. That's essentially what happens. So if you use a general rule, a lot of people will say two inches. If it's less than two inches, you should really throw it in, in, in the garbage. So because of what will happen is it will become garbage anyways, and we don't want to have to transport it. Uh, so if you have a small piece of paper or um, a lot of people use the uh, prescriptions yeah. or, or Tylenol or whatever, it, it can be recycled. You might be might better not. off to just throw it away. Now, that's hard to... We're all, we're not yeah. all, but a lot of our, of, of us are well-intentioned recyclers, but sometimes we do the wrong thing. Um, and it's, it, like on here, I, again, with no plastic bags, um, 
I see it a lot in New London, and I'm sure other cities as well. You, if you have a toilet paper roll, you recycle the cardboard on the inside of the toilet paper. But what people do is they collect them all in a plastic bag, and then they put the plastic bag in the recycling when they should really just put the cardboard in the recycling container. And, and of course, then you get to the quandary that our recycling bins are not covered and people are afraid that they'll just blow all over sure. the place. Yeah, it's, it is a, it's a dilemma. It's a <laughs> Yeah, we do have. So I, I do have a question because, um, you know, the, the, the foil yogurt sure. tops I've heard you, you can't put in. Now, can they be like wrapped up in bigger pieces of foil or should they just go into the I, trash? I would just throw them in, in the trash. And I, not, not worry I about worry like about potentially it. stressing out our facility. I mean, if you have a yogurt, it, it, it may be gooey and gross. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, you know it, the general rule in Connecticut pushes it. If you have a question, just throw it out. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that, but it's it's, it's probably a practical rule. It is. You know, if you just think of like the the vacuum example, if, if you have yogurt and it's gross, yeah, we eat it, it's good. But when you put it in the garbage, it's going to get everything else messed up, and yeah. I, that that would be yeah. Hard. If you don't know, just throw it away. Okay, and this is um, next slide is about New London. Sure. And um, well, it's, wow, we've been around for a long time, haven't we? <laughs> and you think actually, you know, having not a huge population density, but our you know small footprint, you think could help us in the long run? I think it can help us, and, and it can hurt us. Um, the one issue we have is um, we have. Uh, our, our city's sort of down on Bank Street, which we might be able to pick up garbage a certain way. And then if you head down towards Ocean Beach, you might have to pick up garbage a different way. We've got a lot of fun cul-de-sacs that seem to get smaller and smaller as we get more snow. Uh, it, so mm -hmm. it's, it's nice that we're small, but there's a lot of challenges. If, if you lived in a different town, uh, like say maybe Ledger, you could get away with maybe all the same trucks and all everything right. the same, and, and, and you pick a program and uh, you're good to go. But, uh, you know, with us, we've got some interesting challenges, whether it be single family homes or doubles or triples. We've got businesses that we pick up, uh, some do private. And there's just a lot of other challenges that maybe other places don't have. So um, if I could talk about the flyer. Sure. For just, uh, so one of the, the prongs of our committee is we have to get or garner community support. And um, I think in order to do that, we have to get people to believe that they're part of, of a process. So I, I made this one where we want the New London residents to participate in the program and um, to, to give a little bit of ownership. I thought it would make sense to say, hey, we were born on, we're about 27,000 people. And to, to get back yeah. to what you said, we're only 5.5 miles, which could be argued. Some people say a little more, a little less. But it's, it's compact. In, in five and a half miles, we have 27,000 people, which is challenging. And yeah. Rewarding all at the same time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do think that that can be, um, I think it can be helpful. And, and some cities, of course, are uh, denser than ours are. But when you spoke to the different needs of the different parts of, of town, I think that is perhaps the most challenging part. I, I remember when we first received our big green bins. Mm -hmm. And they bought all these nice new trucks with the long arms sure. that would, you know, hands off for the, the, the truck crew. And um, they couldn't go down a lot of our streets. Yeah, the, 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 they call them one arm bandits. <laughs> and um, they are really good in theory. I, I, I like them, actually. Um, but there's a couple problems they have, obviously. Um, if there's a power line, you have to watch out for power lines. Uh, the other thing, uh, unlike you and I, I can't lift four or 500 pounds, but these, right. can they pick it up? If it's X amount of weight, it's no different between a small X amount of weight. So we don't know what's going into our, our garbage trucks. There, there are ways you can go around that. Some newer trucks have cameras, but once it's up, it, it, it's gone. So, um, you know, a lot of our guys, they get on the back of the truck and they get off and they grab the, uh, the recycling carts or the garbage carts and they bring it and they have the automatic part in the back. You, you've probably seen our um, recycling trucks come by and they pick up the bins and they dump them manually. So you can kind of gauge right. the weight a little bit. If you, 
I, I believe it was Skura had told me that um, they actually found an engine block at the, pl at the plant in Preston that someone had put in there and recently they found a jet ski. I don't know how that got into the waste, but I was very impressed that that happened. Yeah, one wonders, either, like a town with super trash men or? I, they, there's someone's one. lifting weights somewhere. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, now these are items that we can't give away curbside or? Right, so these are items um, that you can bring to your transfer station. I don't know if we can go down a little farther, but. Um, oh. oh, you know, it shows here. I don't think I can okay. edit it. it it's we, fine. We, we, we got the top and bottom cropped off. So these are items you can bring to our, our, our transfer station and they will take care of for free. Uh, in addition, if you have bulky waste items, uh, you can call and, and they'll come and pick them up. Um, for a fee. For a fee, yeah. And, uh, the fees change slightly here and there, so I'm not going to call them yeah. is, is the best answer I, I could give. Uh, we don't utilize that system enough. We have had a tendency in New London to just pick up everything. And we're going to need to have some sort of enforcement that we haven't had in, in the past. It, it, it is a struggle to get people to follow the rules, but we also have to model. And um, what I have found is if you s see your neighbor doing something and our garbage guys pick it up, you're going to do it too. Um, I, I, I actually have a couple of pictures where I think someone put an entire tree in their, their garbage. And so if you see it, yeah, maybe not Rana, but Rana anyway is going to put yeah. it. <laughs> put someone the, might be putting it, yeah. And, and so we have to stop that, you know, and um, it's just a matter of finding the, the right balance. And uh, it, it's tough. So the, the idea for, for this slide is these are items that should not go in, in your garbage. Obviously, a mattress is going to be really tough to fit in your garbage can anyways. But a TV, uh, the paint, uh, the fluorescent light bulbs, the computers, uh, and then um, some of the stuff at the bottom there, the batteries, all of that we can pull out of our solid waste and reduce how much we're spending. And, and that's the key, just reduce, reduce, reduce. And that was the idea behind pay as you throw also. Get it out. And, yeah. But we didn't, we don't, or we didn't know. Um, we just, New London has failed in educating our, our public. And so we're working on at least letting people know where the transfer station is and the phone number and what items we can get to the transfer station that won't continue to cost us money. And a little part of the flyer that isn't showing <laughs> on screen has a phone number, which I think is 4475248. Um, I'm not quite sure because it's uh, kind of tiny on the computer screen as well. But, you know, we have called the, the transfer station sure. about various things, and they, are, they pick up. They're very responsive. They're, they're very good. The strange thing about garbage um, is it's kind of magical uh, because if you put out your garbage and recycling in the morning, uh, say 7 o'clock, and you come home from work at four or five in the afternoon, it magically disappears. And so to try to tell people that it's not working is tough because on the surface, it's working great. <laughs> yeah. And I think that uh, points to the problem that you were talking about. Public works has been cut and cut and cut. Mm -hmm. it, it, the number of employees you know, they had 20 years ago and what they have now, it, it, there's been a huge reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, we see, you know, a person who, when I moved to New London, was only the director of the parks division sure. and is now the director of all five divisions of, of public works. You can see that their staffing levels are pretty bare bones and there's nothing really magical about what they do. No, and it's, it's I don't want to single out New London because it's not just New, New London. Um, when we had C.J. May into our committee yesterday, he was talking about, um, I think it was at Yale, they had four people working and then it was three who would do the four people, the work of uh, four, four people and then it was two and then it was one and then it was a <laughs> half time and then no one's there. So it's happening in cities all over yeah, the Yeah, I'm not going to say everywhere, but uh, you know, it, it, it does happen and I think a lot of us are asked to do more with less. And, and so we have to make some adjustments there. Um, and getting out 
those items or other items will help us to reduce our costs uh, moving forward. And, and really, we don't have a choice. And I think when pay as you throw was being uh, presented originally, the reasoning was uh, that we have to start thinking about what sure. we're going to be doing, whether or not this is the very best solution, uh, it's part of the best solution in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, we just can't keep acting like it's magic. Yeah, I, I think, uh, so with pay as you throw, the one huge benefit our committee has is um, we're looking at all, all the different alternatives and it really woke people up to say, whoa, we have a problem here. And a lot of people said, you know, um, in the past when we were getting uh, even more than $5 a ton for our recycling, why didn't we push education? And in, in, in life, a lot of times when things are good, you kind of ignore things and maybe we should have been pushing more, and then a problem comes along and you react. And so we tried to react, but the community didn't really like the reaction. But the reality is we have to change. So pay as you throw, I think, woke up uh, everybody. Um, I mean, enough people came out to council to, to speak, which right. I, I hadn't seen in a long time. That it, it, it brought recycling and solid waste to the forefront, that it is a cost that we incur. It's, it's not magic, it'd be nice, right. but, but it's not. And so our committee is trying to figure out a path forward and, and through some of this education stuff, we can start that immediately and just let people know, no plastic bags, bring stuff to the transfer station. This is what goes in your recycling and that type of thing. It's just, it's a struggle, it's slow, um, but we continue to, to try to educate. Well, you know, education is step one, but then, you know, working on changing the behavior and having everyone do it is, that's a whole, it is it's a, a whole new step. Yeah, and convincing you or I or anybody else to change what they've been doing for a long time is really difficult. So we have to show them why. And our, for example, our tipping fees in New London are fifty-eight dollars a ton. They're going to go up in the future. So we can continue to put all of our items in the garbage and pay fifty-eight dollars a ton, or. $90 a ton. If you go to New York City, it's over $100 a ton. We're actually fairly lucky in New London. Ours is 58. That, that, that's pretty low. Or we can take stuff out or use it in different ways. So if you have a book, uh, we'll, we'll be paying for recycling. Instead of putting in the recycling bin, maybe bring it to the senior center. If you've got magazines, just cut out your address and bring it to a doctor's office. So we can use things in, in different ways. Um, you know, a lot of people use an old coffee can for nuts, yeah. bolts, screws, or whatever. So it, we have to start thinking about reusing the stuff that, that we have. And, and I think recycling falls, in, 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 it's a big overall concept. It's not just what you put in your blue right. bucket. It's, it's everything. Um, what can we use from our trash and take it out and use it in a different way? Well, about uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, John Calandrelli, who is the now, uh, the state head of the Sierra Club mm -hmm. uh, was on this show, and he was talking about you know uh, re reuse, reduce, recycle. Sure. And he said, "Well, there's a fourth thing. Before you do any of those, you have to rethink." Sure. And um, that's kind of stuck with me. That the first thing you have to do is just be conscious of what what you're doing. And it's tough, though, in our world today um, with Amazon. You know, if you order a, a battery and you get a large cardboard box and then there's... There might be a small... Car car well, yeah, and plastic film. <laughs> yeah, it, it, so you, you try to be conscious of it, but it's hard to get away from. Uh, you and I talked earlier. If um, you want to go home and, and cook a steak, yeah. Uh, before, in the past, you would go and you'd buy your steak and maybe they'd wrap it in paper and most likely you would have burned your paper and you move on. Yeah. And now, so we go and uh, we're going to go get a steak. It's going to be great. But then we've got a little styrofoam right. bottom. Then we've got a diaper yeah. underneath to absorb right. the blood or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. then you've got a plastic wrap. And then you've got a little piece of paper on top of the plastic wrap. So we've gone from a steak and a piece of paper yeah. to a mess. <laughs> and so it, it's hard to get away from those yeah. items, you know, and, and um, if you have a, a child, and we're, we're getting up to the holiday Christmas season, and if you buy a toy, you're going to need a pair of scissors to cut off the 800 
little oh. plastic. It will take you an hour to open up a train set. Well, it's funny. You know, most of the shows we're doing at this time of year um, kind of dovetail with this. They're about, uh, well, it's a holiday season instead of just buying more stuff and right. more packaging. Yep. Uh, let's find some good causes to, sure. to support. But, you know, the other piece of that is, so what is wrong with having all this stuff? And part of it is what it all comes in. It does. You know, it comes with so much stuff. If you get back to Amazon, so if, if yeah. a train set was in there, so you've got the box, then you've got maybe a box that the train set was in, and you've got the bubble wrap, and then maybe you've got a little receipt, and you've got all the little plastic items. You've got the plastic around the train, yeah. and the box around the plastic around the train. I, I mean, it's sort of a nightmare, and it's hard to get away from that stuff. Um, there are, as we get into the holiday season, I don't, I don't remember, if, I don't have the dates with me, but um, one, one of the things that New London, I believe they've done for a long time is um, the first and second week of January, we pick up the Christmas trees. So you would put out your Christmas tree on your garbage day, and um, our normal garbage trucks would come by, and our, uh, I believe it's called the highway crew, would follow behind, and they'd grab a, a Christmas tree, and they chip it, and then they'll bring yeah. it to the transfer station, and those chips will be set aside, and you can go grab them yeah. and use them in, in your yard, which is a rethink, where yeah. you maybe you would burn it in the past or just throw it in the woods, but now we're taking a Christmas tree that you used, and then you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna chip it, and then Rana may go and get the chips. And, and that way we, we don't have to go and buy bags of chips that come right. in plastic. So, and the idea is to, you, you keep your streets clean. I, for us, you're supposed to put it out on your garbage day. We all don't listen. But it'd be nice if we put it out on your garbage day and it's picked up on your gar garbage day so we don't have to look at the trees or whatever on, on, on the, the streets. So is that going to happen again this year? Yes, well, it's not, this, not this year, but yes. Yes, Next uh, well, year. in <laughs> January, I'm It's, it's in January. I, I thought I brought the, oh, well, here it is. So uh, January 7th through 11th and then January 14th through 18th. So um, whatever your normal garbage pick up day is just put out your tree next to your garbage can and they'll come by. And there are some residents who are very nice and if trees are left out longer, they go and they, they grab them. I've seen a few posts on Facebook in the past where they say, hey, I grabbed 20 trees today. And they maybe make a game of it. But and please, since we've talked about commingling, take the tinsel off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> tinsel's hard. That's, if you can, please do, but, or yeah. don't use it. <laughs> or don't use it at all. And you mentioned uh, on the last slide um, mm -hmm. that Scura has an app that sure. people... So I um, went to the website. I didn't download the app, but mm -hmm. I did some screen grabs from the website. Um, if you're not sure, you can just, you know, plug in your town yep. and type in what item you're thinking about and Presumably, it'll tell you what to do with it. Yeah, so the, the Scurra app, the Scurra app is, is really neat. It's, it's called Scurra, S-C-R-R-R-A. Um, at the top, you can see it says what goes where. So you download the app, and then you pick whatever town you're from. So it's particular to your town. So if Rana takes the app, and she plunks in New London, and it will bring you to the New London section, which she'll then type in paint. And it'll give you a list of paint. Uh, and different kinds like spray paint or yeah, latex, latex paint. Or... Then you pick it, and so on the next screen it will say, first of all, it will say, don't put it in your garbage. <laughs> and the second thing it will say, bring to your transfer station. Um, sometimes it will tell you the cost. Most of the time it says bring it there. There may or may not be a cost. The neat thing about the Scura app is they keep track of all the searches, and they can refine or add things mm -hmm. a as, I, I guess you can call it a smart app. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so they can add more things to it. So as time changes, and maybe we add something new we didn't have before, or we take something out, or they can just make it better over time. It, it's it's really quite a good app, um, and it's easy to use. Um, so I, I would encourage people to go download it, both for um, iPhones and uh, Androids too. The other too. one, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and the bad news is um, we have three minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you said that when you were on Marty's show, yes. um, there, you had five minutes of, of material that went over the line. <laughs> so now in the last three minutes, uh, what are the uh, you know, parting words, final thoughts to leave people with? Sure. So, I, I mean, 
I, I, I can't say it enough, no plastic bags. But you know, I, I really think for New London, um, if we can have a cultural shift of, of some sort where we're thinking about recycling, uh, and not just in the blue bins, but a big grand concept of using items in a different way. And then when, when you have an electronic item or paint or whatever, before you throw it in the garbage, grab the app application and just type in paint or type in TV and it, it, bring it to the transfer station because every time we take something out of our solid waste, it reduces our tax burden or, or tipping fees. So just think and you know try, try to make it happen. And, and slowly, I, I hope, um, we can make a difference. And you know, we are thinking about it. Our, our, our current motivation has been the tipping fees. Sure. But you know, we've all seen photos and films about the pollution of the oceans and the sure. Arctic and all kinds of places. So, you know, it, that that would be a bonus if we could absolutely help clean up the world. Um, in the last minute, uh, if people want to learn more or come to some of your meetings, uh, where and when are they held? So um, we've been doing two meetings a month, um, usually the second and fourth Monday of the month. Um, we've been meeting at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. If you go on the New London uh, homepage, uh, they'll have the meetings uh, posted. Uh, I, I put in the agendas on Friday and then Mondays are our meetings. If there's a holiday, we try to do our best to meet a different day, but it doesn't always match up with everybody's schedule. Uh, getting eight people on the same day is yeah. impossible, <laughs> Yeah. But, but we try our best. Um, and then if people have questions, you can reach out to Public Works or uh, I'll leave you my email and everything. It, I'm not that hard to find. Uh, ask no. questions. <laughs> um, but we're working through it. It's, it. it's just not an easy issue. No. We've just started the process. Well, thank you for coming on, Brian, and talking about where we are now and where we're going. Uh, next week, our show will be um, some people involved uh, on the board of the New London Community Meal Center. Great. So uh, we'll be going back to doing nonprofits. Uh, <laughs> giving people ideas of, of how to, to spend money meaningfully this, this holiday and not just buy things that come in layers of cardboard and plastic and paper. So uh, have a good night. Thanks, Brian, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Rana. <laughs>